Welcome to Infernal Dominion with Ankit. Today we have a very special feature as we have the legendary John McKinty from Incantation with us doing an audio interview especially for Infernal Dominion and Brutal Existence Radio. Hello John, how are you and how are things going with you? Um, yeah, everything's cool over here. It's good to uh, be on the show and um, yeah, er everything's going good. Just, um, you know, feeling metal. Excellent. The Bestial Congregation, better known as Incantation, has had an impeccable history of creating glorious death metal since two decades, and now it's easily hailed as one of the all-time greats. But the amount of perseverance and passion behind this is what overwhelms me the most. So enlighten us about the early years of the band and your starting days as a musician. Uh, okay, well, I mean, basically, Incantation, we started it back um, you know, what was it, 89, I think, and um, I started, it was Paul Ledney and myself, uh, we were both playing in the band Revenant at the time, and we just felt like that, uh, you know, that they were going more in a uh, technical style, and we wanted to play more of a uh, pure death metal style, so we just started, uh, you know, started the band together, and unfortunately it didn't work out so long with uh, Paul, but um, it definitely was an inspiration to me to, um, you know, do do things in our, our own way that we wanted to do it and stuff like that. Um, yeah, basically then, um, you know, we got, you know, was it uh, Will Rammer uh, help, was helping us out in the band for a little while. I mean, I was also playing for Mortician at the time, so he was cool with helping us out, and um, it was you know, where it really when we started to get Will in the band and stuff, I think it really started to help um, shape things as far as what was to come with the band because he pretty much was the most uh, underground uh, and brutal death metal vocalist um, probably in the world, but definitely in our area at the time. And it was an honor to have him work with us and stuff. And it just was kind of like the perfect... Um, you know, bridge to of what we, you know, decided to work with Craig uh, Pillard on uh, vocals and stuff. It just seemed like it was a really natural progression and everything. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot of fun. I mean, there's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of great aspects early on in the band. I mean, you know, really got to work with a lot of really great people and just, um, you know, it was it was a good it was just a good time. You know, death metal was really popular, but at the same time, we didn't want to necessarily. I'm sorry, we didn't want to necessarily be part of a uh, death metal trend necessarily. We want to do it our way and yeah. you know do things with a more of a um, yeah just our own flavor to it. You know, and it, it's. It seemed to work out good, but I mean, when we started, it wasn't really a game plan to keep the band going for a long time. We wanted to just do it, um, you know, basically for ourselves, and if people liked it, you know, it's an added bonus, but it was never really the game plan. When people started liking the band, we were all really surprised because, I mean, even though we liked what we were doing, we didn't know if other people were going to like what we were doing, so it's definitely an honor that um, people like you know, incantation, especially early on, because it gave us inspiration to, you know, to believe in ourselves and just, you know, follow our own parts musically and not be um, just another, you know, uh, trendy follower, you know? Exactly. And speaking about that, how do you feel about um, the entire underground death metal and grind upsurge, which started to plunder the globe like a raging storm during the late 80s and early 90s? Bands in U.S., Sweden, Finland, Australia, etc., were brutalizing the things with some of the sickest and heaviest metal known to man this date. The entire underground tape trading movement sounds like a dream to live for youngsters like me. So what do you have to say about this golden era of extreme metal? Well, I mean, it definitely was a great time. I think uh, it was just, you really had to work for your metal back then. Um... You know, this was time before the internet and everything. So, I mean, if you wanted to learn about bands and stuff, you had to, you know, uh, 
pick up fanzines, buy fanzines, or order them through the mail or something, and read about bands and just write bands and either buy demos or trade demos and stuff like that. But it was everything really was hard. You know, you had to work really hard for it. Was you know, I think now sometimes, especially in America, I think in Europe and stuff, people take it for granted a little bit that you could you know, download stuff off the internet really quick, which in certain cases is positive, but back when, um, you know, in the, in the early days of death metal, everything you got, you had to put your time and effort and money into it. It, it wasn't so easy, so you'd really appreciate the stuff that you had. you really listen to, you know, your new demos all the way through and, you know, really pay attention to them because you spent money and you, you waited like a month or something sometimes to get things or, you know, fanzines would come in and, you know, I'd read every single little piece of print on the fanzine just to learn everything I possibly could and to get everything out of it. Like, I, I just, it was a great time. There were a lot of bands. We were, we were all just really starved for information on, on new bands and stuff and just really inspired to uh, create, you know, uh, the music that we were into and stuff. And I, I don't think we really knew that we were all part of creating a style of music. It was just that everybody just really wanted to push the limits of uh, underground music to a new extreme. And, you know, it was just, it was more out of just the love of it. It wasn't, um, you know, it, it was it was just, it was a lot of fun. It was a good time for sure. Excellent. That sounds really amazing. And uh, one constant issue which has plagued Incantation since the inception is an unstable lineup. And uh, the initial lineup consisted of Paul, then Will came down, and later on we had Craig Pillar on Deliverance of Horrific Prophecies. But, but the change was a mighty welcome since Incantation weaved its most magical moments with him on releases like Onward to Golgotha and Mortal Throne of Nazreen. But sadly, Craig too had to exit the band soon after, followed by many more exits. What were the reasons behind some of these uh, lineup changes? Well, I mean, there's... I mean, everybody's an individual, so it's really difficult to say one reason. I mean, if you want to make it easy, you could just blame me and say I'm some kind of asshole or something like that, or, you know, megalomaniac or whatever. But, I, I mean, I really don't feel that that's true. I don't think having a, um, a vision and wanting to, um, you know, accomplish the... Um, you know, a certain goal or whatever is definitely being too controlling or anything. But I think people in general, they just change. You know, people change when, you know, you do stuff. And people have different ideas on the way things should go in the band and stuff like that. Yeah. And it, for Incantation, it's like, you know, I, I set a goal for this band. And if the people in the band have different goals in their life they have to follow their own paths and if they if they, their goals are similar to me it'll work out and and at the time when we did especially on work Gotha, everybody in the band was really i think on the same page and just eventually after that you know people started having different um you know ideas or wanting to move in different directions and stuff like that with the band and I mean, and also a lot of it at the time too is there's a lot of ego going on with uh, pretty much everybody because we were young and we didn't really appreciate everything that we had at the time as a band. So I mean, there, there's so many, um, so many reasons why. But I, I don't look at it as a, a deficit to the band. I look at it as a positive because I mean I, I've had the opportunity to work with so many great musicians over the years. And, you know, you know, you get to learn a lot from working with different people and giving you different perspectives on different things. And it's, it's always, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's great to jam with people that just fit and things work out good with, but it's also good to just jam with, you know, a, a wide variety of people too because you learn stuff from almost everybody playing and stuff. And, you know, even though it would be nice to have the same lineup, for the whole time in the band, it's just not realistic, and it's, um, and I, you know, you, like I said, you get a lot out of playing with, you know, different people. I mean, I've jammed with some 
amazing musicians like Dave Carlos and uh, Richard Christie on drums and, um, you know, I mean, people like Craig Pillar, Daniel Crochado, Paul Ledney, um, you know, Kyle Severin. I mean, just so many different people, you know, um, that it's just great to, um, you know, work with these people and, you know, have them contribute to uh, the band. I don't know. It's, it's, I, I think it's really awesome. I never would have thought I would have jammed with some, you know, some of the people I jammed out with and stuff and things. It's great. Excellent. And the fact that Incantation is still going ahead is in its whole uh, brutal fashion, even after all these lineup changes, is very overwhelming and very respectable. So what gave the motivational drive to you to just keep on working ahead and just being focused on your goal, no matter what the circumstances were like? Well, I, guess, I mean, I'm kind of stubborn, I guess, as a person in general, with especially with the band and stuff like that. It's like, I feel that at the end of the day, no one should be in control of my destiny except for myself. And it's like, you know, if I feel that the band has something to contribute or I have something to contribute to the band, that we should be uh, moving on and stuff like that. And I'm not going to let, just because somebody else doesn't, you know, feel that a band should move on, you know, stop me from creating. Because I mean, it, the bottom line is, is that if I if I was to break up Incantation after a certain lineup, I would just end up starting up another band that sounded just like Incantation, yeah. and it, ju- it just seemed silly silly to do that. Um, if I was going to start another band, I want the other band to be different. I want I want it to be like I look at the band a band as a concept. It's a, like the band's a concept. And if my concept is going to be the same, the band should go on. If my concept is going to change, then the band should change. I mean, I think I, I look at a band. I hate to always shut down Amorphous, but I look at a band like Amorphous, which started off as a great death metal band and changed into uh, I don't know, numerous styles. And and for me, I think that if you're going to change your style of your band, it's more honorable to start a new band in that style. And let that band, you know, let the band style that you're doing before uh, be what it is. But with Incantation, we've always been a death metal band, and there's no, um, you, you know, no reason to stop if that's, you know, what I feel, uh, you know, continue to feel like playing and stuff, you know? Exactly. Some very good inputs there. And um, another thing which I'm really fond of is the artwork of Incantation's albums. The artworks done by Chris was stellar and creepy, primitive old school style, whereas Miran brought a very different and an abstract element into the band, which gave a very sinister and profound look to the artworks. My personal favorites would be Onward to Golgotha and Mortal Throne's artworks. So tell us that how did you get across these great artistic affiliations with Incantation? Well, I mean... I definitely think the Chris Moyan stuff is is um, re- a really good expression of a more primitive underground style and stuff like that. I think it just fits right for the kind of band that we are. So it's really great to work with him on this. And then you have Ron Kim, which does a lot more abstract stuff. And that totally fits it, too, because we feel our music is straightforward death metal but at the same time it's deeper than just you know uh just regular death metal or just you know there's a deeper meaning behind the music and everything than what necessarily is always at the surface that people you know i I don't know people might not realize that you know there's a deeper meaning behind the music and just the vibe and stuff like that it's not just the riffs or whatever. I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but Moran Kim artwork being more abstract just fits that because we, we feel that our band is a deeper band and having that abstract artwork and not have everything be like really overdefined. It's like, you know, you, you, like the band means something. Uh, we'll say the band means something 
different to different people or whatever. They get something different out of it. And that to having that kind of 